When it comes to sports, there is never a shortage of things for fans to argue about. But here is an exception. It is widely agreed that the greatest athlete of the early 20th century was Jim Thorpe. He excelled at football, baseball, track and field. Off the field, though, he struggled to find his way in life. Pulitzer Prize winning writer David Moranis tells the story of Jim Thorpe in his new biography, Path Lit by Lightning. He told me that before tackling a major biography like this, he looks for a subject that obsesses him and has a certain drama to it. But I'm also looking for something more, um, a way to illuminate uh, American history and sociology through the character that I'm writing about. And Jim Thorpe offered me the opportunity to write about the Native American experience through his incredible life. He was a Native American, a member of the Sac and Fox Nation. He went to what was called the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Pennsylvania. What was the attitude at that school toward Native Americans? The motto of the founder was kill the Indian, save the man, which meant to save the Native American race, they had to rid them of their religion, of their language, of their culture, uh, shear their, their braids and dress them in the uniforms of the U.S. Cavalry, all as a misguided and somewhat dehumanizing effort to allow them to survive in white society. When Jim Thorpe was at that school, it became readily apparent that he was an athlete on a level that no one else was at. Just how good was he in sports there? Jim Thorpe was, could do anything. He was such an all-around athlete. If you just take football, for instance, he was a, an All-American left halfback. He also played the entire game, 60 minutes. He played defensive back um, on defense. He also was their punter. He could punt the ball 70 to 80 yards routinely, and he was their place kicker. So there was absolutely nothing on a football field that he couldn't do. The 1912 Summer Olympics in Sweden may have represented the zenith of Thorpe's athletic career. Competing in 15 events, he won gold medals in the decathlon and pentathlon. At the end of those two weeks, the King of Sweden, King Gustav, declared him the most wonderful athlete in the world, and he was. Soon after, the International Olympic Committee stripped Thorpe of his medals, ruling he was not an amateur because in the summers before the Olympics, he had played pro baseball in the Eastern Carolina League for about $2 a game. Most of the other players in the league played under aliases. Thorpe did not. He did not think what he had done was wrong, and he did not run from it, but his name was tarnished. He was defeated by the adversary that gets to all athletes, and that is time. His skills eroded, and he couldn't do the remarkable things that he had done. And as his life went on, it takes some dark turns. He had troubles with money. He had troubles with marriage. He had troubles just sort of fitting into the world. How did you try to come to grips with him in the latter part of his life? How did you try to tell that part of the story? Well, you're absolutely right, Rob. It was the last 30 so years of his life were difficult, and I kept rooting for something better to happen for him. And in one sense, you could view it as tragedy. He did have three wives, um, seven children, who were not estranged from him, but didn't really know him very much when, he, when they were young. And he struggled with alcohol, um, but he kept moving. He kept trying to get another job. He lived in 20 states. He went, at one point worked as a, as a ditch digger in Los Angeles. He worked on the fringes of the Hollywood studio movement. Um, acting in 70 movies over that course of time. And I came to think of that as an act of perseverance more than as a tragedy. When I was growing up, and this was a while ago, everyone who was interested in sports knew about Jim Thorpe. But as I was getting ready for this interview, David, I mentioned what I was going to be doing. And this person I was talking to who was a sports fan didn't really know about Jim Thorpe. Is he fading away in American history? Well, his greatest year was 1912, 110 years ago. <laughs> so um, he, he has faded some, but I think that there's a restoration. You know, just this year, um, only a, a couple of months ago, the International Olympic Committee restored all of his records and medals. He finally got his justice. I think the whole issue of Indian boarding schools has come to light again. So I think a lot of those issues are coming back to the floor, along with Jim Thorpe's greatness.
David Moranis will be in Maine on Thursday to talk about Jim Thorpe and his book, Path Lit by Lightning. He'll be speaking at the Kennebunk River Club at an event sponsored by the Graves Public Library in Kennebunkport. Tickets are on sale until 3 o'clock on Wednesday. We have more information on that event, on David Marinus, and on his book, all in the 207 section of our website or our app.